a portion of all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Oh, believe it. And believers don't believe we have authority over all the power of the enemy. So if I know this came from the enemy, I already got authority to make sure in the name of Jesus I can stop and pull down the strongholds that the devil puts in our lives. We keep living scared of the devil and saying that this one said, no, I got some authority straight from the throne of grace. I can't do it by myself, but I got some authority that came from the Lord. I have strength and delegated power to be able to overcome all the power of the enemy. Now, in some cases, some people can go a whole lifetime and not see a snake hopefully at home. But maybe that's not the kind of snake that Jesus is talking about. Maybe he's talking about snakes that walk on two legs. Maybe he's talking about snakes that will smile in your face and slip it in your back. Maybe he's talking about the snakes that say they are for you and do everything against you. And what Jesus said in this case, that I have given you authority to be around snakes, that you don't become snakes yourself. I gave you some anti-snake sermon called the Holy Ghost, that you don't have to, you can live with snakes, and talk with snakes, and walk with snakes, and not become a snake yourself. I've given you authority. I've given you authority. I have given you authority, Jesus says, to trample on the step, to defeat all the power and all the work of the enemy. It's time for us to embrace our kingdom authority. Spiritual principle number four. Now at this point, this is what it says. I have the what? Clarity, Clarity and the Security. To do what? Use. Use. It does not do any good to have something that's not being used. And what has happened is that many of us don't know that we have it. And some of us that know we have it don't know how to use it. So how do we use this authority, this kingdom authority right here, this kingdom authority that Jesus said we had when we got saved? I want to give you three points we've talked about before. How do we use it? First of all, do what? Say what the word says. See, the authority is only used by going in and speaking what the word has declared. What are we saying here? We cannot use authority for something that God did not provide. God, if, if, if at this point, if, if, you, you can't go in and say, I don't have a job, but I'm going to go walk around the new car dealership. I'm going to walk around that car seven times in the name of Jesus. Lay my hand on it. They're going to arrest you. You can't you can only get to say what the word has said, if the word says I have authority over the enemy, I have authority over the enemy, and I got to say what the word says. In other words, authority is never used just by thinking. I have to say what the word says in order for authority to have its proper place. Let's read this together from Mark 11, 23 and 24. Whosoever, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes those things that he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. I speak but how this verse is not saying whatever randomly comes to our mind. It is saying when I know what the word has said I can say what the word has said and expect to receive what the word has said. We got to first of all say what the word says. Here's what happens. How do we use the authority? Secondly, stay in the word. Has anybody ever had a, a medical prescription from a doctor at any given time that was supposed to be used more than. No, no, it's not, I'm not trying to test your faith. I'm just asking you. And it says that you had to, you had to go to Walmart and go to CVS or Rite Aid before it went out of business. Again, go somewhere and get this prescription. And it said, take once or twice a day for three weeks. What happens if you take it one time in that whole three-week period? Will you get the benefit of what is promised? No. You can't, we cannot get mad at the medication not doing what was promised if we don't take it as prescribed. Right. i got to be clear. So what, what did David say? What, what, what Joshua said 1-8? 
Keep we read this together. Keep this book of the law, the word, always on your lips. Meditate on it when? Day and night. Keep going. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I, I, we cannot get the benefit of the authority if I'm not doing what's prescribed. I cannot get the benefit of the meditation if I'm not taking it as prescribed. At some point, we got to make sure that we are, first of all, staying in the Word. I read this together. I love this. We must stay in the Word so that what? The Word can stay in us. See, the Holy Spirit promised to bring back to our remembrance what was shared. You can't bring back what was never eaten. Mm -hmm. So I got to know the word for the word to come out. If the word didn't go in, I can't have it come out. If I stay in the word, then in turn the word will stay in us. How do we use our authority the last way? The last one is what? Straightway. Follow the word. We talked about straightway from Matthew 420. It says straightway they followed him. What's another word for straightway? Immediately or at once. What does that mean? That means at this point that when God lays something on our heart, that we don't delay in responding to what he said. Everybody in here has been prompted by God to do something. Amen, somebody. Everybody in here has been led by God to do something. Everybody in here has been called by God to do something. And sometimes we choose not to do it. Now what is there? He read it from Psalm 11960. I will hurry without delay to obey your command. And let me give you, you everybody, everybody had an experience when you hadn't seen somebody for years and all of a sudden they came into your mind. That was not an accident. It may be God laying that person on your heart so you can intercede for them because you don't know what they're going through. And if I decide I'm going to wait a while, they won't get the benefit of the authority that we already have in our lives. See what has happened? Delayed obedience. God said to do this. We have, we have, there's, no, there's no need for a committee meeting. God's here to do it. There's no need for consensus. We don't need an electoral college to decide if we're going to do it. God said do it. And delayed obedience is simply disobedience. And spiritual principle number five. Here's what I want to talk about. All right, so now, the, let's be clear. The devil does not want us to utilize the authority God's given me. Do we not agree with that? The devil would prefer a message on authority is never preached. The devil would prefer that we don't know what's part of our benefit package. The devil would prefer that we don't do anything that's going to go in and stop and hinder his work. All right, let's read this together. The devil wants us to focus more on our disappointment than defeating him. Keep going. The devil wants us to focus more on our tears than tearing down his kingdom. See, the devil, uh, the, 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 the devil will allow challenges and obstacles and problems. And, and now, it, let's be clear. Every problem, every obstacle, every challenge in our lives does not come from the devil. Amen. If you want to sometimes see the origin of some problems and some challenges and some obstacles, look in the mirror. So the devil, the, the, the devil loves to make sure that the devil wants to use these challenges for at least one of three reasons. Here we have, first of all, the devil wants to increase our what? The devil, all the devil has is the power of deception. All the devil has is trying to influence us away from God. So the devil's desire is to increase our fearfulness. But here's what happened. Because we walk in fear, we won't do what God called us to do. We walk in fear, we get paralyzed. We walk in fear, we won't tear his kingdom down. So the devil wants to increase our fearfulness. So we, even you know this past week, you know what, well, Friday, it's the last Friday in particular. For all of us that have smartphones, our phones are blown up with all these storm alerts. You, 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 I, I, like 15 in one hour. 
first thing I want to say, the storm a chance is going to end at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock comes, 3.05. 3.05 comes, 3.15. 3.15 comes, 3.17. And, and you listen to all this stuff you can do. And, so, and, I, and then that, wherever you were, it probably wouldn't even rain. But the idea was the devil wants to increase our fearfulness so we will not go in and tear down his kingdom and not go in and defeat him. We have been given authority by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ to be able to tear the devil's kingdom down and the devil wants to increase our fearfulness so that we won't go back and use that authority. What was, we said this before, fear is what? Forgetting everything. Amazing. I don't know y'all hear this false evidence of fear. But it's really it's really saying that God has provided revelation. Anybody got some revelation from the Lord? The revelation is we got authority. The revelation is I win. The revelation is we've already overcome. The revelation is we have favor. The revelation is God loves us. The revelation is we already made it. The revelation is God is not going to move. He's already moved. So fear comes in to help us to forget. The amazing revelation he's already given. He's given us revelation to know we already have succeeded. We've already made it. He is not going to move. He has already moved. And fear is there to move me off. To, to cause me to forget he's already moved. Please read this from, from 2 Timothy 1-7 together. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. So fear did not come from whom? Keep going. But God gave us what? But it gave us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So power came from God. Glory. Love came from God. At that point, a sound mind came from God. But fear did not come from God. We keep signing for the package that did not come from God. We keep accepting what the devil got. And at the devil's job is to increase our fearfulness. I love this from the, from the same one from good word, God's word translation. Let's read this together. God didn't give us a cowardly spirit, but a spirit of power, love, and good judgment. See what it said right here, the sound mind? Sound mind is contrasted to, a, to uh, an, unsa uh, an, un uh, an unsound mind talked about here is really talking about it has the imagery of a drunk mind. So, and so at that point, you, you can't trust when somebody's drunk what they're telling you. I love you, baby. You, you can't be trust what they're saying then. You gotta have a sound mind with good judgment. We, we had somebody that, that, uh, that, that was talking to us a couple years ago and said that somebody proposed to her and she, and she told him later on, sober up and ask me again. The idea was you got to have a sound. So the sound mindset is sober. That is, that is not under the influence of anything or anybody else but the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's a sound mind. Good judgment. That I'm only listening to what the Word has to say and not the world has to say. Y'all know we got to read this. Let's read this together. Peace. Now let's start. So Jesus saying this in John 14, 27. He's about to be crucified in John 19. And, and many of the last seven words we get from Jesus are from John 19. Woman, behold our son, son, behold our mother. Several of the last seven words come from this book. But before he leaves, this is one of the promises that Jesus makes to us. Let's read this now together. Peace, I. Who's I? Jesus. Leaves with, who is you? Believers. Believers. Keep going. My own peace. I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. In other words, the world says the only way to have peace is to remove problems. God says, I'll give you peace, glory, in the midst of the problem. The world says you gotta have, I gotta move confusion to have peace. God says, I'm so big and bad, I'll give you peace. In the midst of your confusion. So, so he said, I'm giving you peace. Not as the world gives. Keep going right here. Do not. Now, now what's, what goes before the word do? You. Okay, keep going. You do. Okay, keep going. You do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. So whose responsibility is it to make sure our hearts are not troubled or afraid? 
So I now have the authority that God has given me to make